Welcome back to the shop. My name is Michael Rains. Today we're going to make something truly special. We're going to make something called cold fusion. Now, it's very controversial because cold fusion is said not to exist, or it is said not to be possible, or at least the experiment can't be replicated. Well, I'm going to at least prove one of those myths wrong. We're going to replicate the experiment, and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to take our trusty tube that we used last week, but different things are going to go on. Let me show you. All right, here's the heart of our machine. We have two rods of tungsten carbide, one uninsulated, holding some stainless perf, one insulated with plastic coating, and these little porcelain insulators. You may recognize them. They are fuses. I took the end caps off, hollowed them out, slid them over our tungsten carbide rod for a little heat protection. I don't know if it's going to do much, but we have to do what we can because the process inside here is going to be very, very violent and hot. Now, you can see that this is just the top of the water filter. Here we're going to have our thermometer, our negative and positive connections. Yes, they're just tubes, but there are connections. So now, let's put this puppy together. Okay. Now, we're going to put some water in our little tank. Yes, you guessed it, it's going to be distilled water. Not tap water, not spring water, it has to be distilled. So we're going to pour that in. Okay, we don't want to fill it up all the way, just halfway would be fine. Now we're going to put our anode and cathode array back inside. And that's basically how it sits. Now, we still have to put in our electrolyte, which is KOH. But, first, I'm going to talk about the process a little more. Now, what happens in this chamber, it's going to make a plasma arc. It's also going to make hydrogen. What's going to happen when the plasma arc hits the hydrogen? You guessed it. It's going to burn the hydrogen. That's how this process works. The plasma arc and the current make hydrogen and burn hydrogen at the same time. That's why some people say that we can make over unity by using a little energy to excite the hydrogen to make more energy. This is what the big controversy is all about. I don't really care about the controversy, I just care that there is a process going on here and we're going to get to experience it. Okay, now we're going to add some KOH. Again, nasty stuff, we're going to put on some safety gear. My trusty yellow glasses and some nice gloves. Again, I cannot stress safety. KOH, again, was used for drain cleaner. It's nasty stuff. You do not want it on your skin, and especially you do not want it in your eyes. So we have to be very careful with this stuff, okay? All right, we're going to start adding the KOH. Now I'm going to put in a little at a time so we don't put in too much. Again, if we get too much current flowing, the experiment's not going to work. If we don't get enough current flowing, the experiment's not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a little right now. And we're going to close it up, and then we're going to play with it. And we're going to find out at what point we have the right current flow. Yeah, it's a little experimental, but, you know, that's science. So we're going to put in a little more. And now we're going to screw it together, and we're going to put it back into our stand. Okay? Okay. So we have our transformer hooked up. We have our canister in place. We have our anode and cathode and our negative and positive hooked up. And also here, this little stainless tube is a thermometer which is hooked up up here so we can monitor our temperature. This is where the experiment's going to happen, is the temperature. Now, let's fire it up. Now we've plugged in our variac. Oops, I forgot to tell you what a variac is. This is a really big volume control, like on your stereo, except it controls current and volts. It regulates how much current flows through it. Like let's say we wanted to limit the current that goes through our transformer. 
Well, we only turn the variac up to 10%. Now, as you can see on our gauges already, we're registering some current and some voltage. Now, we have to warm this up slowly. You can also see that we're bubbling here inside the reaction chamber. That is hydrogen being made. Now, because it's high current and not low current, we have less volume of hydrogen, but more current through the water, which heats up the water. If you watch closely, you'll see this thermometer click up, and it'll heat the water slowly. And we have to heat the water slowly for the next 10 or 15 minutes till we get it to 100 degrees before we can kick on full volume. If I was to turn on the power full right now with the variac, you'd see the reaction, but only for a short bit. It would pop the breaker either on the variac or the transformer or the breaker on the cell. One of them would go. That's why we have to heat the water to the right temperature to give it the right resistance to make this experiment work. So, we're making a little hydrogen. We're up to temperature. As you notice, our voltage is relatively low. Our amperage has dropped down. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give it some more power. You can see on our what's up meter, we're using 92 to 94 watts of power. But I'm going to turn it up. So now we're using a little more power. Our amperage is 2.5. Our volts is at 50. We're bubbling down there. Nothing special. Now, we are at 107 degrees. Now we're going to let her have it. There's our reaction. As you can notice we're at 250 volts. Our amperage is going anywhere from 3 to 2. And that's the fusion process that supposedly is impossible. It's 182 Fahrenheit. That's warm. See, we're about a 1 and 3 quarter to 2 amps fluctuating. 260 volts and the temperature is going up slowly steam is starting to come out we're steaming the water in only a few seconds of action and it sounds cool too here get a closer sound of that Kind of sounds like a Ferrari underwater, huh? That's cool. What's up meter fluctuating? I think we might be losing an insulator. Okay, that's exciting. All right, our thermometer is officially not happy. And we're producing steam here, kids. All right. There it is. It works. We're done.